Welcome back to Frost City Kitchen. This is Zen. Today I'm going to be talking about OCG, and this is going to be a whole video that you don't need to watch the previous one. But if you'd like to watch the previous one, please go ahead. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow. Subscribe, notifications on. If you would like to skip to the technical analysis part, you can find the link to that in the description below. I'm going to go through due diligence and then technical analysis. Let's jump right into it. So OCGN, also known as OCGUN, OCUGN, um, and their mission is to develop a gene therapies to cure blindness disease. Now that is their main mission here, and they have different pipelines. For instance, the OCU400 for experimental off inherited retinal disorder is still sitting at preclinical, and its potential to provide one treatment option for all forms of retinals. Uh, I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce that word. The next thing here is OCU410. It's still in the preclinical base for uh, addressing one of the most eye disease among people over 50, which causes blurred or reduced central vision due to thinning of the macula. Now you have the OCU200 is also preclinical and it's addressing the leading cause of vision loss in people over the age of 60, where abnormal blood vessels grow under the retina and leak blood proteins. Now, that is all cool and amazing, but one thing to actually understand about this one here is their COVID vaccine relating to India's first COVID vaccine. And I'm going to cover this as we go. Uh, we're going to go initially with their quick view of their pipeline, and this is the breakdown of the pipeline zooming in here. So... The one that is actually IND enabling and moving on towards phase one and phase two is the OCU 400 program, and it has different indications. And RE3, RHW, CEP290, and PDE6B. And the prevalence goes anywhere from 500 to 12,700, depending on uh, the indication itself. Now, they have as well other different pipelines. The one that I'm very excited about today is actually their COVID one. Before moving forward, I do have an updated one than this one here in the presentation and the SEC filing. We need to look a little bit into the SEC filing. What is the latest material that we have here? This is from December 28th. So the reverse split has actually been denied. So the stockholder did not approve the amendment of the company certificate of own corporations, blah, 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 to affect a reverse stock split of the outstanding common share. They need, I believe, around 75% acceptance for six. Uh, sorry, 16.99. Uh, but in fact, they ended up getting uh, a vote against it. And so that is good, I guess. So we, we're going to talk about how much more time they have and how far they are in compliance. And it's all positive news. Now, the big thing here about it is that they will co-develop uh, the Baharat Biotech Covaxin, which is a whole virus inactivated COVID-19 vaccine candidate to be co-developed by Osiogen and Baharat Biotech for the US market. Now the Baharat Biotech is the it's set to be the India's first COVID, uh, sorry, first COVID vaccine. Now that is substantial, and I'll go through an article that explains a little bit more. But basically, they are uh, on the same path, on regulatory path to approve it in the U.S. market for a whole variant inactivated COVID-19 vaccine. Now, a variant inactivated COVID-19 vaccine is different than the mRNA vaccine. Uh, this is more of a traditional one that is basically an activated version of the virus. Next is their meeting that is relating to item two of the proposal about decreasing or increasing the number of shares. And here it is. The proxy amendment, including with this letter, uh, I'm going to try to zoom in here as much as I can. There you go. Uh, it included and modifies the proposed amendment to the, to, sorry, to the certificate of incorporation by decreasing the proposed aggregate number of shares of our common stock that would be authorized to be from 500,000 shares to 400,000 shares as amended to propose a number and uh, shares that present an increase of 200, 200 million shares. Sorry, it's not 500. It's 500 million to 400 million. And it presents an increase of 200 million shares of common stock etc so they're they're asking for an increase just the number is changing here if you were to look back into the voting material right onto here uh, sorry item two is right over here uh, item two is not even on here my bad but item two is around here and they did mention they will adjourn back into it uh, initially the vote was going to be late on december it's moved on to january 13th 2021st and the rest is just basically saying the same thing and journey solely with respect to item two and item two to be modified to decrease the proposed aggregate number of shares common stockholders so they're increasing from 500 million proposed to 400 million which is from my understanding 200 million additional to what they have currently 
The next thing here is just relating as well to a bit more about the Covaxin, which is the Baharat Biotech vaccine that would be co-developed by OCGN. And they say they has been evaluated in approximately 1,000 1, subjects in phase 1 and phase 2 critical trials, clinical trials in India. With promising safety and it, um, immune data, the vaccine's candidate is currently part of phase 3 clinical trial in India involving 26,000 volunteers. Moving on, this is actually from LiveMint.com. India's first COVID-19 vaccine can offer protection against the new strain of viruses, says drug, drug maker. Uh, the Baharat Biotech Experiential COVID vaccine, basically they say that uh, in, in a quote, it, which is coronavirus, is expected to have a lot more mutations. You can be rest assured that this vaccine will also protect against the mutated virus because of two hypotheses. So you have these two components in the active and inactivated virus and vaccine. It will also take care of the, those mutations. Ellis said he was addressing a virtual program organized by CI, CSIR, India Institution of Chemical and Technology. So that is all fueling in this massive thing. You know, the run for vaccines and penny stocks have been, or for COVID vaccines, have been almost eliminated. But this one here still clinched stuff about the Indians vaccine and coming in with a bit more promising data. Now, if you were to tell me about just on the top of the surface, hey, there's this company that is working a COVID vaccine as a penny stock, I would be like, well, get out of here. But this one here, it's working on a different kind of vaccine, not the mRNA. It's in phase three. So things are looking somewhat promising. And if it doesn't get approved here in the US, I do expect for it to at least get approved in India. And that will be as well a catalyst coming up for this one. Now, the next thing here is, yeah, so their delay from uh, December 23rd all the way to January for that annual meeting, or sorry, for the meeting for term two. Um, and regarding the compliance, they have until March 8th, 2021 to meet that compliance. Right now, it's January 1st, 2021, and Happy New Year to you all. So the thing we're talking about here is that the reverse split has been rejected, their compliance even though they recommended to vote for a reverse split, it got declined uh, for a reverse split. And the compliance they have till March 8th, 2021. And as we talk about it, the pro it looks good. And I'll talk about it more in the technical analysis point of view. Before we go there, we can take a quick look into their presentations themselves. I um, already covered this one here in the pipeline. What I want to do quickly is go all the way down to the part where they talk about the timeline. And it's right here. So in the first half of 2021, publication in Nature for OCU, OCU 400, and then talk study initiation in the second half of 2020, which we're already done, cell banking. So we're going to skip to all the way one half 2021. Uh, expected Oregon drug designation EMA for OCU 400, and then talk study initiation for the OCU 200. IND filing for phase 1 and 2A starts in the US for ACU 400. In the second half of 2021 for ocu 410 you get in the second half of 2021 you have fda pre ind mtg and the talk study initiation and then you have the safety read for ocu 400 and the list goes on in terms of there it goes all the way to 2022 and you get to see there is a bunch of different catalysts coming up quickly going on towards their last quarter you get to see in terms of their total assets we see a good increase and definitely in terms of cash we've doubled a few times over i think almost 2.5 times more and that is reflected by the total assets now in terms of their uh, total current assets that's a good increase now assets held for sale they have none there moving on total liabilities it looks like it's increased just a tad nothing compared nothing massive there and if we were to go towards the revenues, of course, they are pre-revenue as of the moment, with the total current expenses sitting at $10.18 million. Now, in terms of their net loss, is around 10.4. Improvement from the $22 million, but the main, main part of that was change in fair value of derivative liabilities. That really changed it. Loss from operations, that has gone almost four times more, and that is what I want to focus on here. So let's say, okay, 10, 10 million on average off a loss. Their current cash held is around 19 million. That means sometime within the next two quarters, perhaps maybe even in the third quarter later on, they are more likely to create an offering. Now, in process research and development, that has increased a lot. So it's not something where I see general administrative costs has increased, but it's in the in process research and development. 
I could be wrong and they could be uh, decreasing the total operating expenses back to 2 million and that puts them off for a good amount of quarters, maybe years, in order to fix that kind of deficiency in their finances in the balance sheet. Now, a quick thing in terms of valuation, we get to look into the market cap. They have around $300 million in market cap. So keep that in mind. Now, in terms of statistics, I try to go on down here to try to find a price over book. Uh, I'm not able to find it right off the bat. Something book value, book value per share, uh, it's not there as well. So what we're going to be doing, and I said that before, uh, something I highly recommend not doing. I go, I went going on here on Finviz. These things are not always accurate, but price over share of this is true. It's 10,278. And the reason why this is it, because they don't have revenue. So sales is almost null. In terms of price per book, which is more interested in is 1830. Now the average SP 500 is around two to three. So you can say based on the price per book, this one is overvalued multiply times more. But it's running on intrinsic value regarding the COVID-19 vaccine COVID developments with Baharat uh, Biotech. Now, the next thing here is the financials. The financials here in terms of quarterly, we get to see things that are actually looking in terms of operating expenses not so well in the last quarter. And so I might be wrong about that negative 10 million per se, but their oper operating expense hovers around negative 4 million to 3 million uh, i get to see here as well 4 million 3923 3409 3, so 3 to 4 million in terms of net expenses now if we were to look into let's say the total net income yeah it's around the same thing they do have every now and then a surge so instance uh 12.3 million in last year in december now quickly going on towards the balance sheet here uh we're going to do quickly quarterly to see how much their total assets has changed. It looks like their total assets has changed mainly towards their cash and cash equivalents, which suggests that it's either uh, direct offerings or selling shares or getting in their finances. Their total debt has been increasing for a little, but in the last quarter, that has been fixed a little. Now, the next thing we want to look at is their technical analysis. If you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe to this channel to help the channel grow. Uh, a lot of you amazing folks have been watching me but haven't dropped that subscribe yet, so please, please consider doing so. It helps my channel massively. And if you'd like to join our Discord server, which is free from pumping, just a chat room, please go ahead. It's in the description. Now, going on on a one-week perspective, what we get to see is that 10 SMA is above 30 EMA and it's above 50 SMA. What does that mean? It means moving averages are fully bullish. Now, on the 80 axis, 32.54, and that shows in a very strong trend, a positive trend. William Percent R sits somewhere around neutral. MACD looks really good. Momentum is somewhat strong. It is still strong. It doesn't show attraction, but it's slowing down in terms of momentum, rate of change. Now, on the one-day perspective, 10 SMA is above 30 MA, the green line is above red line, which is amazing. 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, which is amazing. Now, when we're looking into the trading action zone it's between 143 and 091, we expect if it drops all the way in that trading action zone, that's where reversals are possible. ADX showing it's slowing down a little. It's above 45, above 45 to 50. That's where I consider selling. So that is a warning sign on the ADX. William percent R is retracting a little. That's another warning sign. And when we're looking into the MACD, we're getting to see it's actually declining. And that is another warning sign for a positive negative reversal if we don't get any news. That is uh, MACD is above the signal line, which is positive. Momentum is still positive, but it's not increasing yet. It's, it's retracted from the 231. Now, on a two-hour perspective, what we get to see here is things are looking a lot worse. Moving averages are full around bearish in the last trading day. The ADX shows in a sloppy movement, MACD, and everything around shows it went back to sloppy. Now, that in particular is not a bad thing when it comes towards their compliance, but if you're looking to make a profit, take a look into volumes. The drop in volume shows it might be trying to accumulate at some point in the next few weeks but it doesn't look like it's running and that in terms of momentum is not yet felt again in terms of you know just for the sake of the argument moving average band 95 cents on the top 86 in the middle and 78 cents in the bottom you expect for it to trade around that sense stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both telling you to sell why it shows in that the momentum and the strength and the volume are not there 
and they're showing that there is a potential strong dip down now we're not talking back to like 20 cents or something there is a lot of potential here with the baharat biotech co-developments of the covaxin but it's still that's what it's showing it's showing you a warning sign to jump ship now on the fibonacci retracements we see a support at dollar 61 dollar 27 and the 85 cents significant resistances are at dollar 96 244 and 306 now, a quick thing, if we were to look into patterns, we have an ascending symmetrical, sorry, symmetrical triangle here, which is bullish. And we do expect that we're going to probably see another run from here based on this pattern here. But patterns don't always play through. Now, quickly going on, we can try to go on to find the significant supports and resistances around here. We're going to do a 30 minute perspective. We're going to do a quick price line. The current support sits at a very strong support at the $1.90. Below there, we're looking at $1.86, below there $1.76, $1.72, $1.61, $1.44, $1.15, going all the way to $0.74, cents, and then down to $0.50. Cents. Significant resistances, $1.93, $201, $211, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15, $1.15